Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video we're going to take a look at the brand new rate limiting functionality that was just added in .NET 7 Preview 4. Now, like with anything that is in preview, it is subject to change. However, the concepts and the ideas behind what we're going to see today won't and maybe just minor API changes will take place. So whatever you learn here will be applicable when .NET 7 is out. Now, this video will be more of a sneak peek and we're going to see and play around with whatever was added in this preview. However, in the future, when .NET 7 is officially out, I'm going to make a full in-depth video on this rate limiting. If you need rate limiting today and you can't wait for this to be out, I highly recommend you click the top right corner of your screen and you watch that video instead. It is a video I made for a library that implements rate limiting and it has all the features you will ever need. So check that out after this video. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. Now, quick reminder before I move on, this year I will be in NDC Oslo in September and I will be running my Introduction to Effective Testing in c -sharp and .NET workshop in person for two days. We're going to see unit testing, integration testing, mutation testing, performance testing. We're going to set the right foundation and even relearn some of the things you might think you know or you might have learned and they're not really applicable anymore just to set you up for success. Check the link in the description and speak with your manager to see if you can expense the ticket and the trip through your company and I hope to see you there. So before I show you the code, let's talk about what is rate limiting. So rate limiting is the idea that you limit the amount of requests you can receive in your system, whether that's your API or just your website. And why would you do that? Well, multiple reasons. Maybe you want to charge users for a given amount of requests per minute or per second or per day. This is very common in things like GitHub, uh, all the Google APIs have it, like the Maps API. It, it's basically everywhere. And they're doing that so they don't waste resources for something valuable. But you can also charge for them. So let's say someone has a premium subscription to your system or they pay for your system, then you increase the limit from 100 requests per day to 1,000 requests per day and so on. You can do so, so many things with rate limiting. And it's just a fundamental concept, especially when building APIs. So let's see how we can implement that now in .NET 7. And all I have here is just the simple weather API that comes out of the box and nothing else really. This is all just standard. And what I'm going to do is currently this is a separate NuGet package that you have to install. I don't know if that's how they're going to do it when this system comes out or if it's going to be merged in ASP.NET Core. But if you want to use it now in preview, you want to go for Microsoft.ASP.NET limiting and I'm going to install this latest NuGet package. I'm going to add that and once I add that I get access to a method called app.useRateLimiter and now this allows me to configure my rate limiter options and how I want my rate limiter to be configured. Now I'm placing this here between these two calls, the user authorization and the map controllers because I want my rate limiter to be applicable only on my controllers, not my auth, not my other middleware, because remember, it is a middleware and its order in the registration matters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say limiter. And to create a limiter, what I can do is say partitioned limiter.create and I'm going to say HTTP context as the first parameter and then string as the second. And what this allows me to now do is have this delegate over here, this partitioner delegate, as you can see. And this will allow me to make partitions of different ways to rate limit my requests. And the fact that I have access to the HTTP context here means that I can use any information on anything on the request to rate limit the user. So I could use something based on the authorization. Let's say a user, I can get a claim and use that. I can check if someone is using a specific uh, query string parameter or anything really, or like an IP or whatever. I can use all that information here. Now, what I want to do is show you the simplest type of rate limiting. So I'm going to return a rate limit partition of type concurrency limiter. And what this means is that I'm going to limit how many concurrent requests I can have in my system at a given moment in time. So the first thing I need is the partition key, which is basically a logical grouping or a logical partition of this type of rate limiting. So what am I limiting here? Let's say general limit. And then I'm going to implement this function. And I don't need this as parameter, but I can return a new concurrency limiter options, which has three 
things. First, it has a permit limit, so how many leases I can give out concurrently, which is effectively how many requests I can have at a given moment in time. I'm going to say one. Then I can have a queuing mechanism to queue requests that are waiting to be handled with, and I can process them either newest first or oldest first. And then I can also have a queue limit of how many things I can have in the queue at a given moment in time. So for example, if I'm only dealing with one request at a time, I can also queue, let's say, 10 requests. So those requests will not be throttled automatically. They will wait in that queue for some milliseconds to be handled after this one request that I can handle is done. Now, for the sake of this demo, I'm going to set this to zero and say, no, only one request at one given moment in time can be handled. Now, this is not one request per second. This is one request at a given moment in time. So to force a reaction out of the system, just because of how fast Kestrel is locally, I'm going to run some stress tests. Now, the last thing I want to configure before I do the stress tests is I'm going to say default rejection status code. And I'm going to return a 429 back. And 429 stands for too many requests, effectively. It communicates that you exhausted how many requests you can send to this API and you have to wait for a second. So with all that done, I can go ahead and hit debug here. And I've already created this very simple performance test in K6. If you don't know what K6 is, I do have a video for that as well. It's a performance testing tool, basically. Um, and will allow me to have 10 concurrent virtual users trying to smash this API down. And the check will only succeed if the status code is 200, meaning that if it returns 429, it's going to just say ah, failed. So I have my console here. I'm going to go ahead and say K6 run and that test. And K6 will run for five seconds. And you can see how many requests I'm throwing. And as you can see, half of the requests failed because I had this rate limiting in place. And just to prove that it was a rate limiting, I'm going to go ahead and just comment this out and rerun it. And I'm going to go back and rerun this performance test. And now that I have no rate limiting, it all works fine. Everything had 200 requests. So my rate limiting is basically working. But you can see that even with 10 users at the same time, which is effectively 10 threads, half of the requests were dealt with because it's so fast to run locally. Now, let's say that that weather endpoint, I don't want to have to put behind a rate limiter. How can I remove that? Well, I can say, because like I said, I have access to the context, I can say context.request.path, and I can say that if path is weather, then return rate limiter partition with no limiter. And the no limiter can have a name like unlimited requests, and that's it. And if I run this now, even though I have a rate limiter for everything else, which is the one request at a given moment in time, if I call that specific endpoint, then I can go ahead and see how the system reacts. And as you can see, hopefully in a second, all the requests were handled successfully because there was no limit for that specific path. And you can have other things like you can have path starts with segment and like exclude a specific segment. So like if you wanted to exclude your API from the system, you could do that. Um, you can do so many things because you just have access to this thing over here. But there's also another very interesting way to rate limit your API. Let me just comment this out and I'm going to go back here. I'm going to comment this one too. And what I'm going to add is a rate limit partition that uses the token bucket limiter. This is a very, very interesting and also, in my opinion, the most useful type of rate limiting in your system because you can actually sell this. And what token bucket limiter means is imagine you have like a, a vase or like a wallet with coins and each coin is one request. And every time you want to handle a request, you have to give away one of those coins. But every n amount of time, some of those coins will come back into your wallet. This is effectively what this does. So you can have 10 coins in your wallet and you can exhaust them so you can no longer handle requests until someone else gives you back those tokens in your wallet. And this can happen every 10 seconds, every minute, every hour, every whatever you want. Let's see the implementation. I'm just going to say token based here and I'm going to go ahead and provide the factory. Now, I don't need this. But in the token bucket rate limiter options, what I can have is the token limit. So remember, each token in our case is one request. So let's say 10 tokens, meaning 10 requests. And then I'm going to have the queue thing, new is first. Now, I don't want to deal with the queue mechanism because I don't really care for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say queue zero, and then I'm going to have a time span. And this is how long I have to wait before someone puts the coins back into my wallet. So effectively, the tokens back in my basket. So I'm going to say time span dot from 
seconds and I'm going to say 10 just to demo this. Uh, and then I can provide the tokens per period. So how many will be replenished? I'm going to say 10. And by default, we have an auto replenishment true. So if I say true here, every 10 seconds, 10 tokens will come into my wallet or my bucket. However, if you have this as false, you can actually try and replenish the tokens manually. We don't have that, but it would make sense if, for example, you want to buy more requests in a system. And once we have that, watch what I can do. I'm going to go here in Postman and I'm going to call this API and I'm going to call it 11 times. So one, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, whoops, 4, 2, 9. No request can be handled, so I cannot deal with more requests for 10 seconds. Now, 10 seconds have passed, so if I click again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, because I fell into the update uh, window, because it is every 10 seconds. And keep in mind that as the name suggests here in the documentation, which is pretty good, in the tokens per period, the available token count will not exceed the token limit. So even if you have a token limit of 10 and you say, I'm going to add 10 back every 10 seconds, you will not go 20, 30, 40. If you don't use them, the limit is hard capped to whatever the token limit was. And like I said, this is very useful because you can sell that. And if you partition it based on a user or an API key, or whatever, then you can say, okay, give me money to do like a thousand now in a minute or a second or whatever. So super, super convenient. However, currently as this is being given to us, there is no implementation that uses some form of distributed cash, which means that if this API is scaled out, which means that we run multiple versions of this API, let's say in a cluster, then each individual instance of this service has its own mechanism of handling those requests, which means that if you say I can only handle 10 requests per second, but you have five instances, then you can probably do 50 requests per second. To counter that, I'm pretty sure that either Microsoft will build something or someone will build something to use Redis behind the scenes, which is very efficient in that sort of thing, to distribute how this is being handled in multiple services. In any case, that is what's in there right now. I highly recommend you download the preview, you play around with it, you have suggestions and you give them to Microsoft to improve this because we have until November for this to be out. So take all the time you need. This is a very cool feature and I'm surprised we actually did not have this sooner and I'm glad they're finally adding it. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe, more content like this, and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.